Alex, over here to your left. How's it going? Good, man. Very impressive out there. Happy to see that. What did you think about uh, someone missing uh, weight by that many pounds at featherweight? Did you have any hesitation uh, taking the fight? Oh, hell no. Not at all. I felt that was, uh, he was a bit uncommitted. Yeah. You know, I'm a professional. When I'm saying I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And when the words of my mouth are the same with the thoughts of my mind and the actions of my body, then I think that speaks a lot about a person. Absolutely. Are you superstitious at all? The old, the old uh, book that shows Samson had all of his power in his hair. Man, I've been getting that all week. <laughs> and trust me, man, I do not give a damn what people think or say. Um, I'm not a person to fall into superstitions. I believe in my actions. I believe in my words and I believe in my mind. I believe in my soul. I don't think that anything is going to give me power. Not the way that I eat, not the hair that I wear or the clothes that I wear or the jewelry that I buy, none of it. What gives me power is hard work every day. You know, for greatness, they say rent is due every day. Absolutely. Last question for me. You look uh, improved over your last couple fights, almost like Alex Caceres 2.0. Can you tell us why that's happening? Has something been done in the last several months or this year or change of mindset or routine, nutrition, anything? Mindset. I would have to say it's all mindset. It's, it's all mental. It's all inside your head. You know, um, understanding myself and embracing myself in all aspects, I believe, um, helped me get over myself in a sense. You know, um, I stopped believing that I was this type of person or this type of fighter and just kind of allowed myself to be anything that I wanted to be. Absolutely. Great work. Congratulations. Thank you. Alex, right here. Jim Greasover, cage side seat. Hey, good to see you again, man. How's it going? We miss you in AZ, but um, I just want to talk to you about the move to Miami. You know, you're around family again. I, I still stay in touch with your brother. I called one of his fights earlier this year, but he talks about some of the differences and the changes in you. How much of that can you attribute to moving back home to Miami, being around family, and just that, that working on that mindset? Nah, I don't think where I'm at had anything to do with the change. It's just um, just understanding myself more and more every day of my life, um, trying to express myself and experience myself through this place we call the world. So um, it had nothing to do with the move or anything. Um, I did change. My brother doesn't think it's for the better, but I personally believe that I'm just taking life more seriously. You know, I got one shot at life, and so do we all. And I'm not going to waste a single second of it. I'm going to love it intensely. And you've been around a long time, a lot of fights for you. But every time I see you lately, you're a completely different person. We just saw you in June, another win here tonight. You're really having fun out there. What do you want to do next? Have more fun. <laughs> How many more fights this year? What do you think? As many as you can get? Yeah, as many as I can get, as long as I'm not injured. Um, if I can finish off the year with another fight, that'll be beautiful. All right, and last one for me. Just describe the differences in yourself now as opposed to when you were a younger fighter. You know, when you're a vet, your mind kind of, you know, catches things that you didn't get maybe as much when you were younger, and you just talked about the changes. So maybe put that more into words as you've evolved from younger to older veteran fighter. I didn't believe in myself. Um, I believed in more the labels of myself rather than who I was on the inside. You know, for a long time, um, I believed that I was just a striker and a mediocre one at that. You know, I didn't believe I had knockout power or, you know, I wasn't strong. I used to doubt myself. I was my wor own worst enemy. So I told myself, F myself. <laughs> and we see the difference in there. So now it's a, just a big, big time difference. Can you just talk about that performance wise? Performance wise, yeah, man, I've been training, man. I've been training every day and I know how good I am. I know the work that I put in. I'm confident in the work that I put in. I knew I had, I was more well-rounded than this guy in all facets. Of the, all three opponents that they switched on me, I knew I was going to beat them the same way. I was more well-rounded. I wanted, and I spoke with my coach a whole bunch of times, I, I wanted that rear naked submission win. You know, I wanted a submission win, period. Just so that people, so I can get out of my own head and stop saying like, I'm this striker that I can't submit people. No. I want to be well-rounded. I want to be everything and nothing at the same time. All right, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good seeing you. And it's just a quick one for me. We're talking about resurgence, right, and how you're mentally been able to resurge in your career, and you see, you see the uh, performance in the cage reflect that. When you have that resurgence and you see the performances in the cage getting better, what does that do for your career goals? Do you now say to yourself, well, I clearly have no limits. Look how much get better I'm getting just up briefly in a short period of time. Do you now think to yourself, I can definitely be a champion or do you just have to take it step by step? 
I, I, I don't, honestly, I don't think that far. Um, I don't watch the UFC. I don't watch sports. So to me, it's irrelevant. I really don't care about um, where I end up as long as I win every single moment in life, you know, I know I'm going to be in a good place. So I just want to be, I just want to be there. I want to be there. I don't want to be there consciously. I want to be there aware and, and, you know, just embracing it all. So um, I do feel like I'm limitless though. I do feel like I'm just getting started. I do feel like I'm coming into my own. I never wanted to do this more than I do want, than I do now. And honestly, I physically, I just feel like I'm growing up into a man. I think I'm a late bloomer. You talked about staying positive and enjoying life and taking every moment yourself. Obviously, this year has been a bit shit for a lot of people. How, give some people advice. How can you stay positive? How can you enjoy the moments when there's so much adversity and the world seems to be going crazier every day? What, what do you do to keep yourself positive and mentally strong in a time like this? Appreciation is key. You know, um, it could be a lot worse. You know, I often think about when I'm feeling in a down and out mood uh, about children, especially, that have lived an entire life of misery, you know, that's, that, that happens all around the world. Living beings that do not have a choice in the matter. So I know I don't have it hard, you know, out of all the hardships I've been through and everything. I know it, th these are just tests and whatnot. I'm not going to give in. I know life is hard, but it's harder for some other people as well and people that don't even, that don't get paid <laughs> at all to do what they're doing, you know, um, in literally modern day enslavement, it's disgusting to me sometimes, but at the end of the day, to stay positive, I have to appreciate everything I have. And we have to understand that we all have to appreciate everything that we have. Okay, fine, we're confined into our house, but we have a house. Oh man, we can't go out and eat at restaurants, but we can still eat food and we can drink clean water. We can take a shower, we can change clothes, we have a shelter over our goddamn heads. So I don't even know why people are getting all fessed up and you know, crazy about things. You know, we're not talking about children in Syria that a bomb goes off and they have no arms for the rest of their life. So let's really put things into perspective. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. Last quick one, Alex. Fighting with no audience, are you getting to like it? Does it not matter? Or would you much rather there be uh, fans cheering you on, giving you energy? Oh man, I love it. I love it, get to concentrate. You don't got the keyboard warriors screaming out, you know, simple techniques as if it was just that simple. You know, um, it reminds me of Japan. They can't hear, you can hear a pin drop in that stadium and yes. it's packed to the rim. So, and they have tons of respect. And I believe it, it helps, for me at least, it helps me concentrate more on the fight. Very cool. Also, great back take. That was really sick. It Thank you very up. much. That's really good. Hey, Alex, can I just, uh, just one quick one? When I hear a guy talk about how much better he feels now than he was earlier in his career, some of the guys that you fought and, and have been unsuccessful against have moved on and they've retired, but uh, it, it almost makes me think that if you think you're so much better now and you've gotten things figured out now, is there one that you would really want back? Like, like do you ever look back and, and see a, a loss or a performance that, that you'd like to give no, back? No, I, I don't look back. Um, the past is irrelevant. The future is not here yet. I don't worry about it. I just want to be here now. Not to focus too much on the hair, but it was just such an iconic part of you. Was there uh, any decision? Was it society? Was it just you just being tired of taking care of all that great lusciousness? But what was the reason behind why you decided to go? Because when you started in with the UFC, you had much shorter hair, kind of where you're looking at right now. But what was the decision beside, uh, to, to, go, to go ahead and cut all that off? Well. Well, for one, when I was growing it out and I got it shaped up for the first time, they shaped it up unevenly. So I just, whatever, I just let it keep growing out. So me knowing that it was uneven, I wanted to get rid of it eventually anyway. But um, I just felt like it was tied to too many um, BS memories. I had to get rid of it. So I do want to grow it back, but I want to start it fresh. Okay, that was going to be my next question. So it sounds like you are going to bring it back. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, and the final one for me, and just kind of following off some of the things that Oscar was saying, when we last saw you was a little bit after the Arbery shooting and there was a lot of racial tension, a lot of Black Lives Matters movement, things happening in the US. Here we are, six months or whatever beyond that. Have things improved here in the US, do you think, in your perception of, of where, we, where things had started at that point? Not at all, I don't think things are improving. Um, I think it has to do with as much as it has to do with the powers that be, it has to do with the people as well, that we just got to wake up and 
stop relying on the same individuals that are doing this, these things to, to the people and really rely on each other. We must focus on interdependency and let go of the dependency we have on corporations or big businesses because that's what really runs us, you know. Like that's what, you know, really um, filters our thoughts. I mean, the minute that we turn on the TV, we are bombarded by uh, labels and things that we should be buying or doing or eating and acting and behaving, um, religion, culture, politics, you name it. It creates a dichotomy dichotomy amongst human beings you know there is no race but the human race literally you can have nationality but to be ha to have national national pride is almost it's an idiocracy <laughs> because you how are you gonna be proud of something that was a mistake you know I didn't know I was gonna be born in America you know I'm glad that I'm human and it doesn't matter where you're from and what you believe in you're human too and I don't want to see anybody suffer the same way I don't want to suffer so um, I think we're just making all these differences with all these labels that we want to put on ourselves, Black Lives Matter, this and this and that, and whatever. We're all people, and we all got to see the wrong, and we all got to admit to ourselves that sometimes we can be a part of the problem. Thank you for that. And then one final question. I know we've seen a lot of other sports have boycotted events or postponed events. I know with their contracts and the way that things work out, it makes it a little bit easier for them. But was there ever any thought, and do you think fighters, MMA fighters, might ever try to do the same sort of thing and say, I'm not going to fight right now? I, 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 like, like I said, man, I, I really don't care about any of that stuff. I don't, I don't know who wants, if they want to do that, go ahead, you know, but I love what I do. I'm a martial artist. This is more than just a test for me. I'm not going to use this as a platform to try and make a difference, which is literally not going to make a difference because it hasn't yet. What makes a difference is action, not showboating about like what I can do with my career or not. We got to get out there and we got to teach people. We're lacking teachers. We're lacking healers. You know, we're lacking those kind of people. It's, we need to get out there and we need to, especially to the youth, we need to be better role models, you know. Uh, I don't know what else to say about that. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. You were, uh, you were on fire after your fight, dancing in the octagon, out of the octagon. What was going through your mind at that time? Good music. <laughs> you might have a second career. Uh, who knows? Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mentioned the self-doubt earlier in your career. Um, what was the catalyst that, that sparked you getting confidence in yourself? Man, as cliche as it might sound, I'm reading books. Reading books, um, under, like listening to other people that went through the same endeavors as well and just seeing how they rose above it and understanding that if somebody can do that, you know, we're all the same, we can all be there as well. You know, I believe if it was not, um, I'm not to be religious, I'm not a necessarily a religious person, very spiritual, but I do see the truth in some of the scriptures and, uh, and whatnot when Jesus, especially one thing I hold dear is that, you know, you can be like me and do greater things than I can. You know, like he was really showing us that we are not separate. He wasn't higher than us. He wasn't something special. We're all children of God. He wasn't just the only son of God. He just won that. He's just the only one that got it at the moment. You know, and says, oh, Eureka. And we should all be doing that. So reading the scriptures was part of that. No, oh. <laughs> not that book. No. <laughs> <laughs>